Prior to Edelman, I served as the Deputy Press Secretary for the White House and spokesperson for the RNC. And before Edelman, I was on the campaign trail of Kamala Harris as she ran for president as her social media director. While we come from different policy backgrounds, we're friends and colleagues. We learned a lot from each other and thought we could bring you into that conversation too. So I have to ask, Bob Woodward's book's been in the news recently, talking about how the president knew how bad coronavirus was, but totally didn't tell us the truth about it. What do you think about that? I think, Jeremy, we've seen time and time again, more and more books. How many books are going to be written? How many times is someone going to come out and say they disagree with the president? Every incident that has occurred or every time there is something that the media harps on, they claim this is going to be the time that it brings down the presidency. This is going to bring down his campaign. Let's look back at the four years. Go back to 2016, when people would have sworn up and down that this is it. The president's never going to survive. And yet, time and time again, he survives the new cycle. I don't know. This, this feels kind of different. I mean, you have to agree here, right? Like, Bob Woodward, famous for journalists, he has tapes where the president is saying these things about COVID-19 and how he's literally downplaying the situation in knowing the extent of it. You know, at what point does the president get held accountable? My question back to you would be, who do you think that this book persuades? You look at the president's base. You look at the fact that they're short up. The media's credibility, as Edelman's trust barometer will tell you, is not high. The president's loyalist supporters aren't going to read this. They aren't going to believe it. And again, in a time, regardless of how credible you are as an individual, if you're a part of the media, unfortunately, due to the reporting, the overall sentiment is that you're not trusted. So who do you think that this moves? Who does this impact? Because the people it moves likely already have their heels dug in for a different candidate. I don't know. I think there are going to be a lot of people who are in the middle, right, who just started paying attention a few weeks ago. And, and you know, they're going to look and say, you know what, maybe it's time for a change. It's negligence, pure and simple. If I did this in my job, I'd probably be fired tomorrow. And so the question I think moderate voters are going to ask themselves and Democrats are going to harp for the next 48 hours is going to be like, do you want this guy to still be in charge after he knew the dangers and then lied to you about that? America doesn't like liars. I think this is a question we'll both have to answer in a few weeks when we get together to see what's actually moved, what comes out. Today we're sitting here on a Wednesday. Will this really even be on the radar by Saturday or is this another blip? You alone today earlier had a conversation about other uh, events that have occurred in the last week that everyone once again claimed was going to move the needle. Those will be blown off the map by this. What will this be blown off the map yeah. by? I mean, Kamala Harris during the campaign said she was going to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. The rap sheet is getting pretty long. Russian bounties, coronavirus, you know, it, it, it's, it's all there. And I think at some point someone's going to say something. Someone besides Mitt Romney, but someone's going to say something at some point. I don't know. I, this. Things need to change, but I think you're right though. The media cycle moves too fast for people to pay attention. But I think there are people out there who are slowly chipping away at the moderate Trump voter. I think they're gonna come and they're gonna pull the lever for Joe Biden in the fall when they see this. And the question will be, is this issue big enough or are there other issues that the voters are focused on? Look at all the moments in time yeah. that everyone swore up and down the ticket that this was gonna be it, this is the moment. And yet we saw that he continued to survive. And speaking of moments, question for you. Joe Biden coming out, denouncing the violence in the cities across America. Republicans would say it was a little too late. It was something that should have been said during the convention, yet the Democrats largely avoided the topic throughout their entire convention. How do you think that plays for your party with moderates and progressive? Yeah, it, it, it's funny because to, to listen to the rhetoric of people saying Joe Biden should have condemned the violence from day one, you know, Joe Biden has come out and condemned the violence. He's also made a distinction between, you know, peaceful protesting and rioting and has said that's wrong. I, I do think Biden is struggling a bit with his party, with our party in particular, because we are such a big party at the end of the day. Um, you know, Black Lives Matter has said that they want to defund the police. And, you know, that's a bold statement to make. And I think most Democrats would not agree with that statement at the end of the day. Uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris don't agree with it. But I think there are those who would agree, and I think you can probably agree with this too, that reallocating community resources so police officers don't have to bear the brunt of all of the ills of society does make perfect sense, right? It's a great point for our clients. What can our clients learn from that messaging? You said it yourself. You have a 
large organization, Black Lives Matter, who is unwilling to move the needle on their messaging. They are out saying defund the police. You have members of the Democratic Party who have also said the same thing, yet you've got the top of the ticket who doesn't wanna do that, who wants to have police reform. How, what can our clients learn from the fact that you are having competing messages, yet you're largely voting for the same ticket? Yeah, I, I think it's a really good question because I think the president has been very smart to take the fringes of the Democratic ticket, of uh, the Democratic Party, not the ticket, I'm sorry, and say, look, you know, these people have said defund the police. You don't want that. That's all Democrats. And so being able to frame the messaging to your advantage has really hurt us at the end of the day because you, there are a lot of moderate voters who think that Joe Biden wants to defund the police, despite Joe Biden's best efforts to, to say not.